in my case, my physical body is a hybrid. I am the octurne being, so my soul emanation is part of my octurne self. My physical body was engineered in a way that will be looking first like a human. To you, I look a human, not to them. I look like an octurne to them, but to you, I look like a human. And that was the idea to construct a physical vessel that was made of a very advanced matrix. Uh, we have very organic, very advanced level of technology. We, we can create um, a very advanced matrix of life that contains the biofield and then eventually construct a physical body out of it. And then I enter my consciousness into this physical form. So I was born, so to speak, or my body was born on my Arcturian father's mothership. And then I was reintroduced into the proper timeline that brought me back onto the planet, which you will call a birth. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Truth Seeker. Welcome to the Truth Seeker podcast. Today, my guest is Vivian Chauvet. Vivian, welcome to the show. How are you? Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. How, how are you doing today? Oh, doing good. Doing good. Excited uh, about our talk, about the subject matter. And a lot of people are experiencing um, so much right now, right? With spirituality, awakening, the UFO disclosure, if you will. I think it's a, I think that we can call this disclosure. It's It's been happening from above, but now we're getting some other sources kind of confirming. So it'd be something fun to talk about what people are experiencing with that. Because it seems to be something that's happening on a spiritual level before there's anything even seen in our skies or anything like that. So I want to dive into these subjects with you today. So um, just, I guess, a place to start. It'd be great to uh, have you introduce yourself and just let people know what you do, what you bring to the table. We'll start there and then dive in and unpack these beautiful subjects. I love it. Yes, beautiful disclosure, the rising of the star sea, the awakening. So what do I bring to the table? I always say I bring myself because I am an Octurian being and I have chosen to send out a soul emanation of my octurian avatar self into a very specialized body and uh, this physical form that you see me as with this earthly identity. Well, this body was genetically engineered by my octurian delegation and with the help of the Andromedan, with also the help of some wonderful genetic energy from my uh, earthly family base that allowed me to be here. So I chose as an extraterrestrial being who have ascended thousands of years ago to take on in hybrid human form so I can more directly connect with you, so I can better positively impact the conscious rising, supporting the rising of reawakening, whether it's a star seat, whether it's the light workers, whether it's the entire civilization of the earth humans, along with a multitude of life life evolving on this planet, we have been communing with Mother Gaia's consciousness for a very long time. We know the celestial being very well. So when the time came and we saw that there was a greater potential for the earth to return into a reascendant self, I chose, I volunteered to say, I want to be on the planet to be more boots on the ground help directly. It will have a greater impact this way that rather to remain in my octane original uh, self and simply choosing point of contact on the planet. Now, many people work with the Octurians. They're drawn to their frequencies. They're, we have many point of contact that we work through, but everybody work with us in their unique ways according to their capacity to hold the frequency that we are uh, teaching and showing those point of contact. Well, in my case, I went like, that's not good enough for me. I want to be on the planet. I want to experience, I want to understand the, the, the challenge, the journey, the reawakening. I want to feel, I want to be here. So I can also send signal and better frequency back, background or feedback, if you would, back to our delegations and the multitude of consoles we work with to better readjust what is the reality of this reascension process on a planet that, that descended so deep into fragmentation and polarization and being able to rise again. So this is why it's historical. And that's why I chose to be physically on, on the ground. So for over 12 years, I've done a numerous 
thousands and thousands of private healing sessions, wanted to really awaken people on a very specif specific soul level throughout the planet for worldwide. I have also created an online community that called the Universal Octrine online community with memberships where we do teachings, we have Zoom meeting, we do retreat with the members. We're very active in their um, in their path. We support them. And it's there's so much learning with the group healing every month, with the meditation series. So we offer that as well. And in addition to that, eventually, when the frequency continues to stabilize on the planet, I have another big project I want to bring. But that one, we have to wait till there's a greater stabilization. But we're we're coming to that point, which is really exciting. We've been waiting for this for a very long time. And so that segues very well with what you mentioned earlier about this deep awakening going on. People experience so much right now. Um, and as one thing we observe is there's so much light. It's almost like if you look at the grid system of the planet, you can see a multitude of light coming on. And that's because everyone who start to be more serious and very much involved and start to cultivate more and more their sense of being of service, being able to rise in their power, redefining who they are, starting to believe in who they are. Well, they release their light. And it's like there's a release, an emanation that is perceived beyond the planet. And it's really encouraging to see that overall in the great system of the world that there's so many light coming on. And that is also because the star seeds who have returned to the planets, they're really now reclaiming who they are. They're really much more confident about their star origins. They're really much more in tune where their soul group and the frequency they bring in that was designed to help and stabilize uh, the earth feel and the sentient feel of Gaia, the new grid system that's coming in and helping everyone as a ripple effect, uh, waves and waves of synergy, of re reawakening, stimulation, opening. You can tell there's a palpable level of gentle acceleration that is taking place right now. And that's because we have finally entered that strongest timeline for the reascension, which means a simply a return into a higher state, right? There's nothing, we want to demystify what ascension is about, what our presence is about, and what is the presence of so many light workers like yourself. I mean, look at the podcast you do. How many people have you interviewed, brought a synergy, the knowledge, the perspective, and that creates a positive impact. So we can see that we're here to be much more present with that support that helps to create those positive catalysts of movement and helping more and more sentient beings on the planet to start to rekindle with the pathway that is encoded in them, the seeds that you brought with you and being able to activate that in ways that brings you into your sovereignty, reclaiming your freedom of you know, mental faculties, emotional freedom, physical, and allowing yourself to finally re-evolve the way you were meant to be, as opposed to be trapped again and again, like a loop, an endless loop into this fragmented three-dimensional matrix reality, this linear time construct that is absolutely obsolete and illusionary, you know, 3D linear time. It doesn't exist anywhere else than here. So we're finally getting ourselves free from these hook of these anchor. And because we bring in a higher galactic perspective, a very ancient ones, we're able to bring a balance between some practical wisdom for very advanced level of wisdom and knowledge and techniques and way to really help to sustain that momentum that we are on the planet. I don't know if you feel it, but there's a huge momentum we're in right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think a lot of people feel it. You know, that's why, you know, uh, conversations like these are very important. And I think the, um, you know, anything that have to do with, with UFOs and you know, the supernatural right now, near-death experiences, all that kind of stuff is definitely 
on the rise. All of the videos that we've done over the years talking about it, channels that are just starting out talking about it. There's a peak interest, I would say for good reason, just because of the energy for one, but just also because of what we've all been going through um, strategically the last three years. Um, when you when you mention what you do as a Octarian hybrid who's who's come here, is that the same thing as a star seed that that you you know who you are kind of thing, or is that is, is a star seed something different? Well, that's a great question, and that's going to bring also another level of opening. So, in my case, my physical body is a hybrid. I am the Octarian being. So. My soul emanation is part of my octarian self. My physical body was engineered in a way that will be looking first like a human. To you, I look a human. Not to them. I look like an octarian to them. But to you, I look like a human. And that was the idea. To construct a physical vessel that was made of a very advanced matrix. Uh, we have very organic, very advanced level of technology. That we, we can create um, a very advanced matrix of life that contain the biofield and then eventually construct a physical body out of it and then i entered my consciousness entered this physical form so i was born so to speak of my body was born on my octarian father's mothership and then i was reintroduced into the proper timeline that brought me back onto the planet which you will call a birth but everything that since the time is an illusion and there's multiple timeline unfolding all at once because we are multidimensional beings, well, we have the ability to see what timeline would be the best for me to reintroduce me to the planet. And from there, it looks like I was born here and I can grow up and then start to feel and experiment on the planet what it feels like to be a human. What does it feel? What is the challenge? What is the emotional energy for, you know, your emotional capacity, your capacity for compassion, your capacity for love? How does it work out with a reawakening and the pushback of the dark light polarity? So we went through that route to, we went above and beyond actually for me to be on the planet because our trends were not able to be in any planet that vibrate at such a low level or a dense level because our body are super high frequency. So it would be very difficult for us to super compress our form to be sustained on the, on the planet. It would be impossible for us to be here. So that was the best compromise we found. So this is why when I refer myself as a hybrid, well, it's my physical body that is the hybrid. That's a huge distinction here. Versus a star seed you talk about, well, star seeds are known as, again, a soul emanation. It comes from an intergalactic or an interstellar group. It can be from a parallel universe. It can be from an interdimensional level. It's an aspect of a soul, a spark emanation that comes and embody a human form. Usually the star seeds, the body was made as the, you know, the reproduction system here on the planet to human parents. Then the star seed and soul will enter the body, chose this life, Look at the soul design that the star seed comes to do, but it brings in its in a seed, it brings with itself on the soul level the knowledge and the encoding of the original soul group it represents. So, for example, if you come from Andromeda, well, you're going to bring that soul knowledge and the frequency of your group. And then the soul seed enter the body and it's usually born, the mother give birth to this beautiful baby and grow that way. So usually star seed is more categorized and recognized as such. It happens that the interstellar group, my apology, it happened that the interstellar group of origin may add some additional genetic material when the mother is pregnant as an effort to help the star seed to succeed better in our journey to bring them more incurring with their star energy or their frequency of the original group. So it will be considered in that level, some form of hybrid in a sense that additional either DNA markers was added or something was added during the pregnancy to help and support that soul 
and they know it's one of them who came back on the earth as an earth human to bring the knowledge, the support, the frequency necessary, the anchoring, and doing the work that it come to do. It's such a beautiful endeavor of love and being of service. So we have to see the distinction of star seeds that can be a little bit categorized as hybrid depending on what I call it additional genetic support they received. So in that way, it's a very different, unique label. As for my case, my body was made directly through the Octorian specialized technology that we have. And it's a very complex series of genetic blend that we have uh, perfect over time to build this vessel. So in that sense, I'm a prototype or my physical form is a prototype, not the being you talk to, obviously, but the body is a prototype. This is why I care a lot about my physical form. And so this is why I, yes, the word hybrid is there, but it's there's so many layers of understanding of how it applies, what is the situation, what is the purpose. And so this is why there's a distinction. I hope that makes sense when I'm explaining right now. Yeah. Um, so what 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 is an Octarian? Like what what does that mean? I would assume that it is a star system and each star system has a different uh job or quality that they would bring to the to whichever planet or realm that they incarnate in is there something specific about Arcturians of what they represent as a whole versus a Palladian or something like that is there is there like a specific message just because we've heard you know that there's other uh beings incarnated here that are that are here to similarly um help and assist with ascension um but a certain aspect of ascension if it's grace if it's caring if it's non-attachment if it's healing arts or something like that is there something specific to octarians and and maybe what that word means in general yes of course so octarians we are an intergalactic civilization not a star system we come from the constellation of butes b-o-o-t-e-s butes so we come from Arcturus is our realm where we originate from. But Arcturians, we know as we are a very advanced and ancient intergalactic civilization. If you know um, the prophet Edgar Cayce, who was very, um, very well known for his advanced teaching and capacity for visions and all and other amazing gifts. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Dr. Uh, Edgar Casey of the time referred to us as a civilization. Talk about the Octorians as one of the most advanced and enlightened intergalactic civilization or race, if you want, that's been interacting with the earth and the solar system for well over three millions mm -hmm. of years. And he referred to us as great teachers where we would interact with him and he, we would brought him to our realm to show him and he would write about his experiences. It's just one example that you can relate to uh, and to someone that is really well known on this planet and in history. So Arcturians like the Pleiades or the Syrians, the Andromedans, uh, the Vegans, uh, the Venusian and others, we are intergalactic civilizations, just like the earth human you are in civilization. And so we're simply, think of us as we are guardians, we're ambassadors of the time when there is conflict or and there is another, another civilization on another planet on the verge of a similar huge evolutionary process. We will be the one assigned to the planet and to that civilization to assist in the process. Um, we are, and we are very vast because we're so ancient. Imagine, can you imagine the knowledge that we have after millions of years of existence as a civilization? So we have gone through so much level of transition, evolution, process, learning. We, you know, we remember place time where some of the star system like this one here in this early inception and how everything evolved. So we are very knowledgeable. Think of us as um 
those master Zen that you go to when you're ready to have this profound soul transformation and you're ready to reach the next level of enlightenment. Um, we're not masters like Buddha or Master Sananda, but we are very um, prophetic into soul evolution. We are great master of soul healing, what we call also eating the soul matrix. We help a lot of souls who transform from the earth journey out of their physical body and are ready to transform onto the other level of octave of evolution. We assist a lot of those souls to understand, heal, depending if there's trauma, the way they transition, or if they carry a lot of baggage coming from the earth plane, we're going to assist them to help to heal those souls, help them choose the next level of either incarnation, or is there another level of a plane of existence they can evolve to. You don't have to be in a physical body all the time. You can choose to be formless and to move higher into conscious expansion. So we, we have been doing this in a very simplified way. And this is what I do. Now, as for my mission, yes, I have been very active publicly for the last 12 years plus, but my mission for me, I'm here for the future timeline. So we're about to reach that point. And when, again, when the frequency has stabilized enough on the planet and the polarized field is start to get a bit more unified, then humanity is going to reach another level of conscious rising. Then the true nature of my, um, my mission can begin. So right now I have been in assistance. Think of it as preparation mode. All oh, over 23,000 healing sessions done. I travel the world. I give lectures, host retreat. I do lots of interviews, a lot of teaching every month, group healing. So I'm really active to prepare the field for the reascension. But this is a preparation phase. My mission is going to start get active a little bit further. So I have to be very patient with the process. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the process of doing uh, 23,000 healing sessions. That sounds like a lot mm. over, over, you know, 12 years or a lifetime. How does that, that look? Are we talking, are you able to, uh, transcend space, t space time? Are you able to do multiple sessions at once? Um, it just doesn't seem like a, a number that can be attained of, you know, doing one thing, a healing session. How is that you know, how do you, how do you uh, reach that number of doing that many sessions? Well, if you look about 12 years span, um, well, on average per month, it's, I do about hundred sessions per month. So if you do hundred session time 12, it start to really add up pretty quickly. Um, it's sometimes I'm in session eight, 10, 12 hours a day, depending on the demands. Uh, sometimes those sessions, you will be maybe four people in the group or one-on-ones, depending on how many. Um, but it's a really specialized session in the sense that when we open the holographic field, we have this intuitive consultation with the person or that group we work with. Sometimes we work with a parent and a child, or it can be a spou spouses, partners, or it can be four friends who wants to you know, evolve together. We do that too. Uh, I've been doing that a lot of that too. And so it's really about looking at everybody's journey, what their perspective are, what are the opportunity through what we call establishing the blueprint and being able to identify versus what a client says versus where the higher part of themselves is telling me. So we're going to make a lot of recommendation. We're going to say, okay, based on the assessment, this is what we see. And this is what we can already initiate today. And this is the framework of the work we would like to do. And the person most likely will say, yes, that's, I was attempting to tell you something, but you got the essence of it. I'm like, oh yeah, I can see, you know, your feel is telling me, I can see your history. There's, there's so much going on because I use all of my senses all at once. So the numbers are high because this is what the council, my council I work with says, we need you to intensively make a lot of huge you want to transform a planet, work intensively with a handful of people. If you look 23,000 out of billions of people, it's a handful in reality. It's a lot for one individual. But the impact that 
the number of sessions we've done, it's not about just healing your chakra and then we're going to do some regression and you understand what your father or your mother did and you come back. No, we go well beyond that. We go through the timeline. We go into your holographic field. We work with a concept of time. It's a level, it's a high level of mastery type of work. So it's, it's a lot of work and I have invested tremendous amount of energy, time, dedication, because that was a task appointed to me. We want to make a significant movement for the planet and into the consciousness. One of the best way to do it, work intensively with people. And it says if you work with 100 people very deeply and you help them transform, you just change the world. And it's true. Rather than doing thousands and thousands and thousands in a group or meditation, yes, it will do its good. But the impact is not the same. And so we do that, we both we do both. We do group, more mass, and we, we've been doing also very specialized. So the impact is really doubled if you want. And there's a much greater synergy. Because did you know that one light worker who transform has the power to affect thousands. So if you look at the multiplier fire, 20, 23,000 people we work with intensively, what they change, what they transform, what they generate, multiply that by three times fold. And that's a lot of impact on the planet. So this is how I was asked to do for now until we saw that the timeline was stabilizing to avoid too much backslash from the dark light polarity. And then eventually we're going to be able to move it to the next level. And we're about to gear up in that, in that duration, which is exciting. Mm. So the number looks a lot, but I can tell you, I work a lot. It's seven days a week. Uh, the work vacation is not in my vocabulary right now. And I asked the team, I said, I understand that the needs are great. And we understood that over the last decade and more that we were gearing up into a really important uh, shift and we want to support that. So I did my part and I'm still doing my part every day. After our interview, I'm going back in session all the way till seven o'clock tonight. And this has been rolling this way. Hmm. Wow. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you came to the knowledge and awareness that you were um, an Octarian, like as far as like childhood or experiences, or was you born knowing, or was there an event that happened that you became aware? Can you talk a little bit about that uh, discovery process? Yes, of course. Of course, with pleasure. It's always been innate. I would say even as a baby, I remember, but even at six months old, there's always been this knowingness because I am who I am. So I have to think as the way I perceive the world, the way I think, uh, my my thinking process, my perspective, uh, the way um, interacting to reality with people, it's always been from an Octarian perspective in this hybridized human form. But again, to you, I look human and you will say, well, she just has a different personality or different traits or... It's just her energy, and I will be translated that way. Now, today, it's much more recognized because so many star seeds are awakening, and that reality of coexisting with your intergalactic brothers and sisters is becoming natural. But if you look 20 years ago, that was not the case at all, and even less when I was growing up as a child. So this is why it would come across just as personality traits or demeanors or energetics, but in reality, I've always been who I am. And I've always been aware of this, even when I was four or five in, a, in elementary school, sitting in a classroom. I remember first grade, seven, I was seven years old, I'm looking around and I'm observing how children respond to each other, how the adults or those in authority was supposed to teach the minds of these children. And I found fascinating how sometimes we waste time on blames and pointless TV shows. And I'm like, hmm, okay, this is where that's the idea of education. And I've always had that thought process. Can you imagine a child sitting in the classroom going, I'm looking around and I'm analyzing and I'm communicating that energy back to my group. Now that communication became much more intense as I was evolving back 
into my consciousness, knowing that I am who I am, well, I was very engaged into understanding, feeling, navigating through these field of experiences I was having. But it's always been a part of me. And then as I came out of the educational system, which was most fascinating experience, and then moving into early 20s, this is where the team, my team, my Octurn team said, okay, now we're going to prepare you for what you really come to do here. And that was the beginning of another level of youth transformation, whether it's physical body upgrades, whether it's another level of awakening in terms of a new set of knowledge coming in and they were coaching me all the way. I still have my experience. I still went through a lot of things that people go through on the planet, uh, like driving a car, having a flat tire and going, oh shoot, I wish I could just transform the tire with my thought. And the team said we could, but you would attract attention you don't want to right now. So let's just call a AAA or, or a service and let them change your tire. And so they were coaching me the necessity of allowing some three-dimensional event to take to unfold in a three-dimensional field because the consequences would be greater and, or the lesson would have been missed. So there's a lot of understanding that I get it. This is why I'm here. This is why I can have this conversation with everyone. I understand the path. I chose to walk a path that I have no need to walk. I'm already an ascendant being, but I have to go through, make some mistake, understand on the human level, understand compassion, understanding the challenge, the beauty, the grace, the gift, the awakening, the joy of coming back into your empowerment and says, okay, now we're going to settle in into who we are. And now we can have another conversation or take it to the next level because now you're, you're more ready, you're more receptive. And I would say that's a key word. What took place in the last three, four years was to help to reawaken in what's called a receptivity field. Well, before the receptivity field was very entangled with all the fear program, but it still is, but it's so much more open. So when you talk about you a full disclosure or open dialogue with a higher being or higher consciousness, you're more open to it. You're more receptive to it. You see the difference? That's huge. That's what's opened the door to having more advanced quantum communication. Um, and so be because people are open to it, they're seeing it or almost like are manifesting it or something like as far as the they can tell we're ready, right? They, they can tell we're ready or we need help or something like that. And so they're sending. Um, can you can you speak to that just a little bit more? Like, like, why are more people seeing UFO activity? Is it increasing? And is it, you know, let's just start there. Like, why are we able to see more? Is it increasing yeah. or just we be just becoming aware of something that has always been in our skies, if you will? Or, or it, oceans and, and mountains and all of that. And you're correct about that. It's a really, actually a very powerful observation. Um, because if you look at the Aboriginal tribes, uh, the elders, their oral tradition, whether it's the Zuni nations, the Opie, Navarro, uh, you know, I mean, so many across the world, and I want to honor them all, of course. It's always been part of their tradition to talk with the star people, the Kachina dance, um, or, you know, honoring their ancestors. It's always been a natural part of their upbringing, the teaching, uh, the, the cultural, the oral traditions. It's being part of who they are. So at the same time, that part of your world has always been in tune with that natural phenomenon that the earth is part of a solar system and you're part of a collective of planets, uh, Saturn, Venus, Mars, Pluto, there are other celestial beings. And then that's little part of your solar system is part of a galaxy. And that galaxy is part of it. And you go on and on and on. So if you look at just the level of diversity of life, then this planet is capable of holding. Well, that's a cue to tell you, hmm, how come this one planet here can have diversity of insect, humanoid, animals, plants, trees? What makes this ecosystem so 
unique and special, so to speak, is it possible it's a reflection of as above, so below? So that already opened another doorway of conscious reflection. And that's one thing. Now, people are awakening. That means that all of your senses are becoming more attuned. It means that you, your mental mind is shifting out of a more fearful, survival, primal, or instinctual energies into a more open, you know, more complex thinking, more complex way of processing knowledge. More people speak like language. That's because you're opening the quantum linguistic field. You're getting more attuned. Your senses become less 3D physical and start to reopen more on a multidimensional level what they were meant to be this way. Your third eye become more attuned. Well, your higher mental faculties start to get more on, on board. You're less on autopilot, navigating through life by programming. Mm -hmm. You start to get off of the autopilot and start to look more about what am I a part of? And so the questioning, the resoning, the opening of your senses, open what we call your channel of communications. And look at your nervous systems and huh? you go like, okay, the nervous systems, we know from a biological perspective, well, your nervous system, the way we perceive them, they're gateways of light. They're like highways of pixel of fractals of light that communicates with your entire body system, with your etheric field, with the universe, you're getting so much information that comes even on a universal level and your nervous system will redistribute that information. So this is why the 3D life is designed to get you very, very busy mentally, to overwork your nervous system, and you're so busy making a living and making things work and have a little bit of leisure to make it fun, right? Have family, friends. You're so distracted by anything else that you no longer look at what is essential about you. Understand your body template. Why is your body designed this way? Why is your nervous system vibrates and creates sound and tone? Your nervous system creates tones. And when you attune your clairaudience capacity, you start to hear the tones of your nervous systems, for example. That opens up your field of awareness, your field of receptivity. You start to open more on the, on the conscious level. And that starts to reopen the doorway to go, oh, wait a minute. Everything is not as solid as as is appear. Why some suddenly I look at the sky, it looks like an holographic projection. That's because you're starting to reattune your senses to higher octave of reality, perception, vibration, consciousness. And then so when you call UFO sighting, you just we look at you and go like, ah, dear brothers and sisters, finally. You're going back online with your true senses, and now you start to perceive our presence for thousands of years. We've always been here. Plus, if that was not enough, let's add another layer. Look at your planet. All the petroglyph, crop circles, secret sites, monuments, scriptures. The planet is a book of history that tells you ancient Egypt, uh, all of these temples, uh, segment. What do you think segment is? Mm -hmm. Segment is an extraterrestrial being. She's a Lyran. It really is. And I know because I communicate with the Lyrans. Yeah. So you can tell that there's so much archetypes, symbols, analogy that is right there. But when you go in school, what are you learning about history? Columbus Day, President Day, who founded what? You know, Native Americans, as they used to call them. I know it's no longer the term. I understand versus the cowboys, all these old cliches that cast you into thinking into a very small box that this is the world, this is history, this is a reality. You're shifting out of that. This is part of why you start to see more at what has been there all along. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense though? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, in probably third grade, maybe second second grade doing a project where we were learning about the um egyptian gods they were just in in the history books somewhere and we read a story or something like that in passing and 
and we was working on some art stuff. And I remember like jokingly, because that I didn't know, jokingly told one of the other second graders that, hey, did you know that these yeah. Egyptian gods are real? And they used to be real. These were real gods. And I I was just joking, like trying to get him, you know, make him believe. And and I convinced him. He's like, really, they were real? I was like, yeah, they used to be real gods. And he asked the teacher and told the teacher that I told him. And she got on to me and saying, those weren't real. Jesus is the only real God. And uh -huh. those aren't, aren't real gods. And it's so funny that the, the teacher correcting me, supposedly, um, shaped my understanding yeah yeah those were just mythological they're just myths and our myth our story the christian story is the only one that existed and so that was my understanding and at probably everyone's understanding if you went through that educational system they educated that out of you really um and then come to find out as we do our research hold on they are the ancients they are older than our Christian gods, if you will, and are just our Christian gods are them repurposed and with a new face is, is what it is. But it's funny that we come in kind of like knowing that and then there's guardians to try to take that knowledge away from you and lock you out of it. But everything comes full circle. And it seems like that's what's happening, you know, to humanity, if you will. Very well said. I love your example because it illustrates this very beautifully. And it is true, you're coming back to a fuller circle. And that means with yourself, a fuller spectrum of understanding the true aspect, the complexity, the beauty, the power that you hold, how much light there is. When you breathe oxygen, yeah? well, of course, it feeds your body, your body stream, the bloodstream, all of it. You breathe in this oxygen that turns into energy and energy turns into light. So you're coming back to a fuller spectrum of understanding like your example that jokingly you told a classmate well no those those were real they existed and then you were corrected based on a teacher an educator whose filter was taken out of a greater reality to bring her to her reality and box you in and and i see that even to this day um, when things still happening, because after time, when people are still in that paradigm, it's just out of fear. Mm -hmm. They can no longer let go of a frame of reference that they believe are their lives. And it's very fearful to unwind and release and going, well, what will happen to me if I betray my God or my belief systems? You know, so a beautiful example. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's beautiful how these are all um I won't say coming back. They've been there the whole time. We just it's our capacity to have two things coexist. To have your beautiful Christian understanding that was revealed to you how you met God if you will and how you met grace and forgiveness also with the much older traditions that that um that have names you know, that are the, um, the embodiment of what is inside of our Christian tradition, hence holidays and sacred days and all of that kind of stuff, to have those coexist, that it's okay to have both or to be open or to not have all the, the answers because we're here to learn and to experience. And I think that much like my second grade teacher, you know, a lot of us kind of speak on things out of fear and out of she didn't really know no. she just repeated something that she was told and i you know okay. what's changing with with individuals now is they're they're in relationship with such information such ancient technology or ancient call them gods or angels or whatever if you will they're a part of an order that is more real to them than their second grade teacher. <laughs> so <laughs> this knowledge is coming back and people are experiencing this in their day-to-day -day life. And, um, you know, it's just that, again, the cycle or circle to recapture the thing that they tried to take away from you that you knew at one point existed. And it's coming back to us.
and it, and it's can be hard it's not easy to you know to look at the pastor or whatever system you come from as you know we we give them a, we give them more credit you know that they know more than you that you are one who just led by the imagination not knowing that your imagination is sacred and you're being communicated with through your imagination that you know it's been stifled and taken from us and it's just so beautiful to see that um embodying in people's lives naturally just turn on the internet and and listen to people speak and you can hear how they're coming back into touch with this such primordial first nations um expression it's amazing and we can honor it and it's okay it's awesome it's it's like more than okay it's what we're put here to do beautiful it really brings also the true nature of what compassion is about and i love what you said a very powerful key word is coexisting so when you are in coexistence with what you may have believed with all your life regardless of what that is but you and at the same time there's no but and at the same time you're open to explore new avenues new possibilities you start to allowing yourself to create that positive beautiful balance shift and transformation and that may feel a bit more uh, acceptable more gentle more divine ease grace going to there's no need to go through transformation kicking and screaming and full of fear just because you're going to be transforming there's ways to do this so the proof is the pudding so to speak is a civilization like ours the octorians we've been in coexistence with the earth civilizations for a long time because we've been visiting this solar system for a very long time so in reality that would be another way of more elevated openness to coexistence or even in your neighborhood sometimes we have neighbors or we encounter people even in the mundane day-to-day -day life that have really much rigid belief system because that's from generations or ancestral you know lineage uh program to be in a certain way and then they teach their children this way because that's what they feel is their truth but when you coexist with this you start to realize that there's there's the coexistence of a multitude of realities right here right now your reality and my reality are very two different aspects but right now we're in coexistence yeah? we come together to converse exchange so we are in that coexistence with each other so that opened the field of accepting more so you talk about ufo disclosure well the word the the meaning or the semantic of the word disclosure is shifting in meaning it's shifting it's evolving it's simply re-accepting there's a greater history there's a lot more civilizations. We move the word ET or alien out of the way and just other civilizations at different stages of evolution and state of awareness that have been coexisting with your solar system, the Milky Way, and even beyond the Milky Way. So that brings you back into that place of acceptance, receptivity. And it feels less threatening and there's nothing to take away from you it's just a process of accepting other spectrum of reality if that makes sense mm -hmm. for sure if if people are having um experiences and this could be they're having sightings they're having strange dreams they're seeing syn synchronicities in their life that they can't explain they they feel like something is communicating with them or they're being led by something. Are there any practices that people can do to ask that question as far as like, you know, who, who's there? Where am I from? Is this good or bad? Because obviously, if you ask the wrong person, you're liable to get bad information that tries to shut that kind of thing down, um, which many of us have, have experienced. Again, um, is, is there any anything... Um, that you teach that people can do to heighten their senses of awareness or get clear answers on on where they're from and who's communicating with them? Yes, indeed. It's all interconnected. Everything you describe, it's all interconnected. 
because the more you go into a higher state of awareness, the more your quality of understanding those experiences become clear to you. So for example, if you start to get strange dreams, well, again, redefine what does it mean to you strange? Okay, what is strange about? And you start to understand by the, to demystify what that dream, for example, was about, you start to extract the seed of what that experience really means for you. So was it your subconscious projecting all layers, program, energy, fear that is coming out in the form of, well, that was a strange dream, what this is about, versus, hmm, that was strange, but I feel there was a communication and meaningful and meaningless as something more profound besides emotions and fear being projected. There's something more about this. So the more you're allowing yourself to be truly in connection with yourself, with allowing your mind to bridge, imagine this luminous bridge coming from your mind, connecting with the heart center, and then close your eyes, connect to that bridge, connect to your heart, clear your field, clear your mind of all the questioning, allow yourself to clear yourself of all of fear, doubt, anything that contracts your field and your ability to be in tune with you. Imagine you, I'm just going to expand my heart energy. I'm going back into a point of centeredness, what I call zero point and divine neutrality, centeredness. Then you can ask a question and of course, pay attention to what part of you is asking what and for what purpose. So again, this is important to clear your lower mind of a thousand questions seemingly confusion, fear, anxiety, that needs to be cleared. Because if you ask a question in that state of mind, well, the answer may seemingly feel the same way. Because again, your field of awareness and receptivity is contracted too much in that fear. And you're too busy trying to figure things out. If you're trying to figure things out, you're stuck in your mind. That's that's your clue. That's your, your clue right now. So bring yourself back and feel to the center of your heart. This is I'm connecting to the essence of my being, my divine spark, my divine energy. A dream has some components. This dream I just had, it's different. I can feel there's something there. There's an energy wants to communicate. I feel like there's something I need to know. I am now ready to receive that message. Reveal to me. Show me, help me understand the true meaning, the higher meaning of this experience that you call a dream. And then see how that happens. Feel, you'll know. You can also utilize automatic writing or creative writing, which allows you to spontaneously, like you know it's there, let it flow. It's an extension of you that communicate on paper. Not on computer, no typing. Write, feel the pen of paper connect, right? So in anything that you see, whether you saw a ball of the light that's flashed at you, remember that this is no longer looking at the craft or a ball, connect to the consciousness behind that. That will be another tool. So if I saw something in the sky and I know it communicated with me, I know there's something there, mm -hmm. but chances are it's just another consciousness connecting with your consciousness. Ask again, look, feel, I feel you. It's consciousness connecting. Show me. If you are a consciousness connecting with me, then power up or do something. Allow me to see. And you will start to feel. So you talk about, or we talked about earlier about people are awakening. They, they feel more. They see more, right? Mm -hmm. The feel is opening. Well, allow yourself to be in that same state of openness from a place there. I'm a sovereign being. I'm a divine being of light having this human experience. And I use my higher consciousness to understand a dream, an experience, a sensation, a vision I might have in my peripheral, maybe uh, a knowingness, a sensation through my body. I felt like a chill down my spine. I saw something in the sky. Then go use the same technique, clear your mind, open the bridge of consciousness, connect to your heart, 
I am ready to understand and better comprehend this experience revealed to me. When you're approaching it this way, of course, more is going to be revealed to you. But of course, if in your field, there's a part of you that is still very afraid and you feel like, I want to know, well, I'm not fully ready. Well, that part will be honored. And you go, it doesn't work for me. Everybody else seems to see but, but me. If that's the case, and ask, maybe the seeing part is not quite there for you. And it's okay. Just honor where you are. Then ask differently. Give me a sense of knowingness. Let me feel that's more comfortable for me. Use the clairs that you're familiar with and grow from there without comparing yourself to anyone, without feeling you're better or less than. Just honor where you are because it's a big deal for you and honor every step of it. This is how you graduate. This is how you evolve. But I can tell you, it's no longer, no longer about the craft or the vision. It's about higher intelligence connecting with you as a higher intelligence. Okay. That's good. Connection. That's good because they have, they just got to find out what gets your attention, right? Yes. They're, they're always communicating. And sometimes it is synchronicities or movies or a repetitive phrase, um, different things that catches your attention. So it's not about the thing. It's not about the movie. That movie, it's man, that movie. Yeah, the movies are great. Honor the honor the movie, honor the writer, right? But it's right. the consciousness behind it. What was the message that was trying to communicate with you? Like, same thing when you see a craft or see a light or a yeah. star that gets your attention and starts pulsating, communicating with you. Um, it's not to worship, it is to honor it, but what is the question? What is the question you ask? What is it? What is the question that you're asking yourself in that moment? Um, and I would say that even ties into our religions. Like, you know, we honor the religions and honor the container in which they come, but it, but the the religions, at least the the prophets in those things, never wanted you to worship them. The angels come and actually forbade you to worship them and, and really was to listen to the message that they're bringing. And then we are just enamored with their glory and their ascension. And they're like, oh my God, I want to worship this. Wait, 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 what are you doing? You see that <laughs> over and over. It's like, I'm asking you a question. And and most of the time when we tried to do that, they just say, hey, I'm, I'm just an evolved version of you. I'm you don't worship me, worship God and listen to the message. And the message wasn't bow down and worship such thing. It's to pay attention to the consciousness. What what is the meaning behind such visitation? What did you do to warrant this star blinking at you? You're asking questions. This is the answer. Such a beautiful way that we're all a part of that, where everything is singing this this song in this beautiful course of of life and eternity that is expressing itself through everything through the stars through you writing automatically on paper you know through you watching a movie there's nothing you can do to escape it it is in all and through all and it's your ability to become aware of it such a fun song and dance and everyone's a part of that it's you become yes. aware that you are amazing amazing absolutely i mean it's just that's it. That's exactly it. Amazing. Oh, so good. Well, Vivian, thank you so much for coming on and hanging out with me. If people want to get involved with your, your school and everything that you bring to the table, get more information on you, listen to some more interviews, all that kind of stuff, where's the best, uh, best place for them to go? Uh, thank you for asking. So I do have a website. It's called Infinite Healing from the Stars. Dot com. That's the name that came to me a long time ago. So infinite healing from the stars.com. I also have a YouTube channel, uh, my full name, Vivian Chauvet, Galactic Healer. We have a podcast called the Infinite Star Connections. And every month I do also med monthly meditation series for free as a gift to humanity and everyone. 
Uh, we do right now the Rays of Creation series, and also I do an additional monthly uh, session, a monthly meditation. I mean, it sounds it feel like a session, but it's a meditation, and we change the topic depending on where we are in the frequency, and we readjust. Mm -hmm. They're encoded with so much love and algorithm of light and presence with the Arcturians. It's really an experience with us. You can feel our presence. You can feel where we're exuding. And so come see our website, watch the videos and YouTube tools. We're here to really help you remembering, ultimately remembering really who you are and even on a DNA level. So we're going to continue expanding our services, what we offer, our teachings. We're going to continue evolving alongside with you. And it's a beautiful collaboration of partnership together. And remember that you're part of a very vast community that expands beyond what you remember so far. But allow yourself the journey. You know, we always say, no fear, everyone, just light. Huh? So stay in your light. Mm, that's so good. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. I've enjoyed our conversation and we'll have to do it again. Thanks so much. That would be wonderful. You're an amazing host too. So thank you. Oh, thank you, my friend. We'll do it again. Thanks. Thank you, my friend. Bye-bye. Vivian Chavez, ladies and gentlemen, make sure y'all check out her work if that resonated with you, if you have questions and um, hope something spoke to you. Hope something stood out from amongst uh, the conversation that you get to listen and, and key in on. I believe there's something for everybody. Whatever it is that is for you, the, based upon your consciousness, based upon the questions that you've been asking. What are the questions? Out loud, asking people, asking your second grade teacher. In your mind, replaying over and over your contemplations. That's when you know that a prophet or a holy person is amongst you because they are able to discern the thoughts of the heart. Meet you where you are, in your religion or lack thereof, wherever you go, wherever you may be, you'll find that everything you need is already provided for you. This is the song and dance it the process is you becoming aware of it once you're aware the question is now what what do we do now how do we engage how do we grow deeper how do we take this further the answer what we're finding is within another question it's within the next contemplation so the, there is a great key that exists within your ability to ask questions, to interview, to interrogate who? Yourself. The kingdom of heaven is within you. How do I leave my body? How do I go to such places and encounter those lights in the sky? Try to fly. See how that's working. Go within. Go within to get without. The kingdom is within you. The celestial luminaries are within you. Make peace within. Make friends within. Peace with God. Peace with your enemies. You have no enemies. You'll find that the work that you're doing within, the contemplation, the wrestling, the questions, once you get the answer, you'll see the reality outside of you change and shift. We're all doing it in small ways even. Maybe you've already seen it. But once you see the impact, they're like, hey, this is it. Let me, I'm trying to, I've been trying to change everybody outside of me and I'm not changing anyone. But I found that when I change myself, everything and everyone outside of me comes into alignment. The more money I seek outside of myself, I seem to not be able to have enough. I can't get enough. And I'm always without because I'm seeking it outside of myself. The moment I identify what, what it is within me that is lacking, if there's something within me that I'm not a good steward, 
let me address it within, see the manifestation outside of me, and then open up any valve or doorway that would suppress the flow of whatever the information is, whatever the reward or the abundance is, whether it's money, whether it's love and relationships, it's nothing outside of you. Understand that it is within, it is in the heavens, it is on the earth below, it is within and it is without. But in order to see the manifestations of it outside of you, you have to do the work. You have to ask the questions. Nobody can do it for you. You're on the bus. You're on the right track. I'm proud of you. God is proud of you. He's not mad at, at you. Jesus is championing this work. This is the great work. Is you. Christ in you. The hope of the world the hope of glory, to really transform, change this thing, and to win it. And we're doing it. We're doing it. We are reaping the reward. We are standing upon the backs of giants who brought their torch as far as they could. And now their hand is extended to you. The ball is in your court. What are you going to do with it? Stay on the path. Keep doing what you're doing. It is working. It is working. Every small step forward, every leap of faith, moving forward on that path, it has more impact than you know. It is a beautiful contemplation. It's great to be able to look at your sphere of influence, your realm of influence in this reality to know that it was nothing outside of you that you did, but it was all the change that you did within, all the healing within that then in turn manifested outside of you. Come on, the wealth, the wisdom, everything that you need according to life and to godliness is given to you. Know that, I hope that that builds your faith, breathe it in, freely receive and just simply say, thank you you've got this my friend thanks for hanging out with me much more is on the way namaste well that does it for this episode folks to hear more episodes of the truth seeker podcast head over to truthseeker.com and if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards go to our patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker